All right, guys, I'm just in here getting my laundry and stuff put away. I'm gonna go attack some more of the hardwood floor in the family room. I'll show you guys that I actually had Blake and his buddies came over yesterday and we swapped out the furniture. We put the sectional downstairs in the basement and had the two couches brought upstairs because it just looks a little more formal and takes up less space. It just looks better in the room. But when we bought the sectional, we bought it for comfort, not for looks because we were like, who cares? We just want a sectional and to be comfy. So anyways, um, I'm going to work on that for a little bit. Ken and Chase are outside working on, we get all these like cattails around the pond that we just get too many of them because they spread like crazy. So they were cleaning up that mess and then we're getting new sand delivered, I think tomorrow, um, for the beach of our pond to like make that look really nice. And we're really almost to the point of, um, like being done with everything. Like nothing's been major. They have all just been like really little things. Um, just checking off things off the list. And um, then it's basically wait to get the pool and stuff open and then the house will be ready to put up on the market, which just seems crazy. But I feel like we have time. I feel like it's kind of nice that we busted our butts to get all this stuff done. So now we can kind of like enjoy it for a little bit, you know, enjoy the pool and stuff. And not have to be like scrambling last minute but I do want to say that it's um three o'clock right now I'm really excited I got my headphones ready to go because I think Carly might be filming something upstairs um I stayed up last night till midnight to listen to Taylor Swift's new album released Tortured Poets Department and I was just blown away I loved so many of the songs I posted on Instagram which ones I felt were kind of my favorites and honestly it was like more than half of them and now I'm like second guessing because I've already gone back through last night with my headphone first we played it in the bedroom and Ken and I listened to all of them together and we really liked like Fresh Out the Slammer in Florida because they got kind of like a really good vibe we kind of like more like the I don't want to say upbeat like but peppy songs songs with a little bit of a twist to them this is an album of straight up poetry, <laughs> really sad poetry. It's definitely a breakup album. And um, so many of the songs that I didn't think were my favorite, like Guilty as Sin, everybody's saying that's like their favorite, so I need to go back and listen to it. And I honestly, I feel like I like the whole entire album. There isn't a song on there that I don't like. It's just I had ones like Love of My Life that I liked even more. I really like Fortnite. I can do it with a broken heart. That That's heartbreaking because just imagine her like out performing on stage for the Eras tour during this breakup and just had to just been so hard. And then the Alchemy, I love the lyrics and I really like Clara Bow, which I feel like she's singing about herself. I find it interesting to be on social media and kind of go through everybody's like opinions of what they think everything means and who she's singing about. and. It's like, unless she makes a video or some sort of like documentary like she did with, um, what can I think, Folklore, um, we won't really ever know what the songs are meant to be about. But at any rate, I was getting ready to go to bed. I was on my Instagram. Someone sent me a DM. 2 a.m. She released 15 more songs. So now we have a double album release, 31 songs. I real quick had my headphones and was like flipping through the songs. I couldn't even tell you one of the songs from the second half half of the album because I just was like trying to just get a little taste of each of them and plus I was so tired. I was up till 3 a.m. and then the dogs woke us up at 3.30 to go outside because there were thunderstorms and it was thundering and whatever, lightning. And yeah, I feel a little like, I actually didn't even get out of bed until almost 10. So I did get a decent night's sleep but it was a slow morning because of being up so late and not getting moving till late but just real quick and I grabbed these couple clips because I mentioned in my last video that I would tell you guys about this little catastrophe we had so we had this tiny little maybe three inch wide section on our coffered ceiling in our grand room that the drywall like had this little crack and it was like hanging down Probably no one ever even would have seen it, but we knew it was there, so we were like, we need to fix this. 
and Ken patched it with like what do you got? I want to say mud, the drywall mud, whatever that's called. Then he went to he sanded it and then went to spray the knockdown and he tried to spray the knockdown at the angle so that it wouldn't get all over the gray painted part of the coffered ceiling. Instead, it got all over the fireplace. So now we're trying to figure out how to get all this drywall that basically it's white so it almost looks like paint, but it's not. It's drywall in a can basically because it was the knockdown. Just what a mess. It's literally been three days of each step of this process. Today, everything's finally cleaned up and done and I painted it. I had to get the like roller with the long stick out and it's all done, but my gosh. Just a prime example of how you have this tiny, teeny tiny little thing that you need to get done around your house and it turns into a three-day project that it was intense trying to get all that off the fireplace stone because everyone's afraid of heights in this family and there was only this really narrow thing that you could stand on and even then you could only reach up so high so we were trying to clean it with this brush on a pole and let's just say that it was a topic that brought a lot of um, tension to the household for a couple days. First you have to tell them your exciting news and why we're eating pizza on Friday. What's the exciting news? Your weight. Oh, 15 pounds. Your lowest in how many years? A long time. <laughs> so we went to Stubborn Brothers Pizza in Toledo and it was reviewed by, I don't know the guy's name, what's his name? Dave Portney. From uh, Barstool and gave him a really good review so I guess this place is famous and it was on the to-do list and these things look huge <laughs> so Stubborn Brothers Pizza I don't know Village Idiot and Toledo is probably my number one although Gino's is was my number two but that place you had the other it's called Romeo's that was actually Pennsylvania. pretty good yeah J&G's they're they're not mm. that's all right and so. what was that cat and dog place or whatever cat and dog that was all right what was it called I don't remember it's cat and cat and, cat so. and cheese it's not cat and cheese oh uh, whatever Ooh. Mm. holy cow that's huge that is huge you had no idea it was that big, did you? That's what she said. Is that an extra large pizza? It's just the normal pizza. Jeez. So this is New York style. This is the one I ordered The thin for crust? Me. All right, let's see what the other one looks see like. See what's on half of it? Sausage on half, bacon on the other half. That's Ken pizza. <laughs> can, you eat, can you imagine if you ate that I'm whole thing? i whole thing tonight. I'm yeah, right. 15 pounds tonight. And that's candies. This is the, what's it called? Style. Right, better you know have what? mushrooms this on is it. The, I got extra mushrooms. mushrooms. You okay, I got it. extra mushrooms. I hate when pizza's do. It, yeah, there's like nothing. All it is is the spread. Well, Take it back. We're going back. <laughs> we drove 25 minutes there and 25 minutes back. And how many times did you have to? I honked honk my horn three times. Girl texting, not even looking at the road. Some <laughs> dude, like literally coming right at me off a side street. And what did he say? He was trying to gap. Catch the gap. Catch the gap. Because <laughs> I pull up the light. I'm like, dude, learn how to drive. He's like, I'm trying to catch the gap. And I won't tell you the foul words he followed that way. <laughs> just, people are insane. It was an experience. <laughs> was a, I'm just glad to be home alive. Taste testing. Are we giving it the same review? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Probably better fresh. There's not a lot of sauce on it. No, you can get extra sauce. It's crust and cheese. That's the difference between this and Romeo's pizza from last weekend. That had that a lot of sauce and it was like a sweet sauce. Which Gino's does. Right. Well, that's what Carrie had said. She thought it was comparable to Gino's. A 7 out of 10. Yeah, I think I'm a... I'm probably a 7. I'm but, still village idiot by far. Put it this way. We'll never drive to Toledo to get it again. I think I'd go in the restaurant and eat, maybe. If you were out and about, but we're never over that way, so probably not. Village Idiot's still the best. Do you agree or no? Yeah, their pizza is really good. Is it your favorite? No. 
Pizza Hut is your stupid favorite. Isn't it? <laughs> I like Pizza Hut pan pizza. Is that your favorite? Probably. That's ooh. My eyelashes have literally been itchy the entire way. Here. Itchy? Are they new? Yeah. You just put them on today? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's Sunday. We're at the mall. Why do I look so pale? Because you're pale because you don't go out in the sun. My cat ate my homework. <laughs> actually, my cat ate my computer. My computer turns on, but it no longer actually turns on on the screen. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's some holes up here. There's some holes down here. My cats like to bite my computer screen, so. Tate bit it the other day and the whole thing shut off and now it doesn't turn back on. Tate usually goes for the top. I think this was Cordelia's work. <coughs> Jeff's surprised. <coughs> Those didn't break it. Those are huge. Yeah. Compared to that little one. Just yeah. So we have an appointment with the oh, genius bar. I knew bar. it. You always were like, we need to leave 40 minutes early. Like the mall's yeah. 20 minutes away. It's 1.20. This is, we're right on time. The appointment's at 1.30. Yeah. By the time we walk in, it'll be 125. That's how you do appointments. By the time we walk in, yeah. it'll be 125. What, are we gonna stay here for six more minutes? <laughs> you have to walk into the mall. You think it's gonna take us six minutes to walk from here <laughs> well, to the By the time store. we get done arguing. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I like to be on time to things, but early is just too much, and you are just too early for things. I think this is the right, okay, so if you had a job interview at 1.30, you're walking in right at 1.30? No, but I'm probably arriving at like 1.22. Like. Yeah, but then what about the minutes it takes to walk in? And it doesn't take minutes to walk <laughs> in. Like what? It's right there. It's a good I don't skill need to have. Six extra minutes to get from here into the store. That's insane. It's a good skill to be places early. I mean, like when I go to my therapy, I arrive at one or the twenty-eight mark every single time. Really? Does she still do that thing where you just have to text her? Yep. And I mean, even I've texted her one day. I was there at like the twenty-five. I said I'm here. She didn't tell me until the twenty-eight to come in. Yeah. So I just know get there when the, the time's at the twenty-eight. <laughs> and I mean, I do that. The other day, I did get there. Couple minutes late though. Carly, <laughs> that uses up your appointment time. Yeah. Do you know that? <clears throat> yeah, it was the only one time I wasn't there on that time. Uh -uh. All right, we're gonna go in see how this goes. We don't know if they fix it on the spot. If you got to come back, she texted oh, her teacher for her chemistry lab, biology, biology lab. And told him that my cat ate my computer and I can't do my assignment, <laughs> and he is ignoring me. Well, it's the weekend. I emailed him yesterday. Saturday? Or I emailed him on Friday, actually. Oh, oh yeah, Friday night, though. It was like later in the day. So we got, Sun just made what's push. this called? Panda Express. And we have to go, I don't understand the whole ID thing. You didn't need your ID to drop your computer off, but you needed to pick it up. Whatever, anyways. <laughs> She didn't bring her driver's license. Like, do you not remember what I look like? I know. So, it was going to be, you explain it. How much? What did you say, $599? Plus tax and whatever. It's going to be, like, basically $600 to replace my screen, and then it would be, like, 1000 to buy a new computer. So, at that point, I was like, might as well buy a new computer, because... He said that it's a lot faster, like the newer model and just all this special stuff, which do we believe him? We well, don't really know. It will be faster. The other thing he sold you on was that you can't add Apple Care to your current computer because mm. it's too old. Where if you get the new one. Which I think he's a liar. Really? Because <clears throat> he's over here trying to tell me that my last computer is four years old. No, it's not. Didn't you buy it right after high school graduation? Mm -hmm. Oh, I graduated so in only be two. I remember I had bought that computer because we had brought it. <clears throat> yeah, because I used that one old computer mm -hmm. for Edgenuity, like my online school in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I had bought a new computer for college, and she like helped me set up with all the Microsoft stuff on it. Like, so my computer's two years old. He was saying it was four years old. Anyways. So she got $100 off the computer for being a student, and then the Apple Care was only $159 for three years. So if her cat bites her screen again or anything else happens, it's only $100. What? Nothing. 
it's only a hundred dollars to get the screen replaced instead of six hundred. Ken wanted to go to this lobster food truck. There's another one next to weekend. That looks pretty good. We got a lobster roll. That looks two tacos for how much was it? Like 20 bucks. 50 bucks. 50 bucks for both things. Jeez. I swear, nothing can ever just go smoothly. So Carly gets a call from the Apple store and they're like, we can't transfer all of your information from your old computer to your new computer because the hard drive is smaller. So now she's like all mad because she's like, why would the guy not tell me that when he talked to me into buying this new computer? She said most of the time she already feels like her old computer hard drive gets filled really quick and it's the 500 gig hard drive. This computer only has 256 gigabyte hard drive because when you buy a MacBook Air, it has less storage. She really didn't want to spend the money for a Pro because it's like, she doesn't really need it, you know? So now she's mad because here the guy talked her into upgrading her new computer, which was like 1100 and some dollars total after tax and paying for Apple Care, because that's like basically double the price of getting the screen fixed. If it was $600 to get the screen fixed, now they're telling her to increase her hard drive. She has to spend another $230 and now she's gonna go there tomorrow. I'm gonna have to go with her because she forgot to bring her wallet and so we used my American Express card to buy the computer and she was gonna just pay me. And she's going to get her money back from the new computer and order the screen repair. <sighs> she's just like, she's charging her like old, old computer right now. And she's just like, I'm gonna have to find a way to make this work to do whatever college assignments that she has to do between now and then. And she's just frustrated because she's like, she feels like that guy should have been aware that the hard drives were different size. And also she's just convinced that he kept saying your computer's four years old and there's no way it is because she went in there and bought it the summer before she started college, which would have been not even two years ago. So now she's thinking she definitely just wants to pay the $600 to get her computer repaired, get the rest of the money back. So that's what we're gonna have to do tomorrow afternoon. She's like, well, I'm not gonna be on their schedule. I'm going to get there when I get there. I'm like, whatever, because I got stuff to do tomorrow morning anyways, so. All right guys, so it is the time of the night or I'm winding down, it's 9.30, it is freezing. So raise your hand, not that I can see you, but raise your hand if you had to turn on your air conditioning already this spring to then switch back and go back to your heat because that's what we had to do. And right now it is cold in our bedroom. And then I just got this delivered today from Amazon and basically what it is, don't believe everything you think. It is a book to kind of help you understand why you think the way you do, to help understand your moments of suffering, basically. So this has a lot to do with like the root cause of all psychological and emotional suffering and how to end it, how to become unaffected by negative thoughts and feelings, how to experience unconditional love, peace and joy in the present, no matter what our external circumstances look like, um, how to break, break free from a negative thought loop when we inevitably get caught in one, how to let go of anxiety, self-doubt, self-sabotage, and any self-destructive habits. That's why I'm reading it. Um, I'm really interested in, and it's super short, are these pages even numbered? It's like 100 pages. Uh, they also have one on Amazon. I'll link this one down below, but they also have one that's kind of like more like a workbook style 
where you can sit and take notes, but I just grabbed a pen and a highlighter just if I want to make note of anything. But I've seen so many people share this and a lot of people said this helps them understand their anxiety better. Like in certain situations where you just don't understand. Like for example, when I get anxiety when I go to get my hair done, when she's like putting the color on my hair and all of a sudden I feel like I need to get out of the seat. I, my anxiety tends to come in at moments where I feel trapped and like stuck. And as soon as I tell my head that like, or it pops in my head that like, I need to get up but I can't get up is when I feel like that anxiety kick in and I, I don't really understand why it happens other than I guess a feeling of loss of control but I'm hoping maybe this digs into it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm going to get out of it. If any of you guys are interested once I'm done reading it maybe I'll mention it again or maybe I'll talk about it too in like my April book review it'll be something a little bit different to add to my reading wrap up for the month but that is my plan thank you guys so much for watching um i did discuss with carly that our final solution is we are going to take her computer back i looked it up on our youtube channel and she got the computer of august we posted the video august 2nd of 2022 so she hasn't even had it for two years yet so when you made the appointment for the Genius Bar, you had to click on what you were making the appointment about. What computer, what phone, whatever. Like if I click on mine, it shows my iPad, my iPhone, my MacBook Pro, my Mac desktop. Like I'm, I'm thinking that maybe she selected the wrong computer, which maybe then also could affect the cost of her screen replacement. So. I think the whole thing is messed up and we'll order the new screen and hopefully she'll get her computer back Wednesday or Thursday and I know she was working on posting a video coming up here because she was vlogging the other day and so I don't know when that's going to happen but it should be coming hopefully by the end of this week but I hope you guys um, are having a great day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.